Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, we continue doing what I consider to be the most important part of this whole course, which is solving problems. Uh, now, this is the fifth, the fifth uh, set of problems on theory of probabilities. These I call uh, easy problems. There will be some more advanced ones hopefully. All right, um, so this is part of the whole course of advanced mathematics for teenagers presented on unizor.com and that's where I suggest you to, uh, to watch this lecture but before doing that I strongly recommend you to go to the website and look at the notes to this lecture. Um, uh, notes basically contain all these problems and solutions, but don't pay attention to solutions first. Try to solve yourself all these problems. Then you can read the solution, you can listen to my lecture, which where I will explain the solutions, how I understand it. So basically, let's start. Okay, um, the problem number one. I have a box and in the box I have R red balls and B black balls randomly positioned inside the box I don't know how it's all inside the box now I am randomly choosing N balls from the box and randomly it means basically that the probability to pick any one of these balls is exactly the same. Now I choose n balls. Now I'm interested in the probability of having s red balls where s is obviously from 0 to r. I cannot draw less than zero and I cannot draw more than R red balls, right? So for these S and for this N, N is obviously greater than zero, I have to choose, I have to determine the probability of taking um, among my N balls exactly S red balls. All right, let's just think about this. Um, What's the sample space? Sample space is all the different groups of n balls which I can pick from from this box. Now in the box I have r plus b balls and out of these r plus b balls I'm just randomly taking n balls. So how many different groups of n exist? Obviously, the number of car, uh, combinations from R plus B by N. All right. So this is the total number of events, elementary events, in my sample space. And they're all uh, equally probable, which means that the probability of each one of them is 1 over this number. Now, all I have to determine now is how many good elementary events um, satisfy this particular condition. So how many groups of n balls contain exactly s red balls? Well, let's just consider. We have n balls, all right? s of them are red and correspondingly n minus s is the number of black balls, obviously, right? So, I have a freedom of choice to have s balls out of r so number of combinations from the r red box uh, red red balls by s is number of different groups of s red balls which can be part of my n balls um, set now with each of them I can have a freedom of choice of the black ball, balls, right? So 
if n is total, so n minus s black balls are supposed to be picked from the b uh, black balls. So this is the number of um, different combinations uh, of n minus s black balls, which I can get from the b black balls. And obviously with each of these combinations, I have each one of those combinations, so that's why I'm multiplying them. And each one has the probability 1 over this, so the total probability is this. This is the answer. Now, obviously, my uh, conditions should be that, well, S is supposed to be from 0 to R. Now, also, S cannot be greater than N. Obviously, I cannot, if I choose 4 balls, I cannot have 7 red or something like this. So this is all for all these conditions which, which basically uh, are necessitated by the formula here. Okay, that's it. That's problem number one. Okay, problem number two. I have a standard deck of 52 cards. There are four different uh, suits, as we know, um, and the cards have different ranks. Now, for each suit I have cards from 2 to 10, uh, Jack, uh, Queen, King, and Ace. Now, I will call these cards of all the different uh, suits, doesn't really matter, numerics. And these cards I will call pictures. This is basically my way to divide the total of 52 cards in two groups, two categories. I have 36 numerics and 16 pictures, obviously, because I have four different suits. So for each one I have um, all, the, all, all these cards. All right, now, now I'm randomly picking two cards out of the deck. And I'm interested in all the different probabilities that I have two numerics, I have two uh, pictures, or I have one plus one, one numeric and one picture. Now, I'm picking two cards. Doesn't really matter the order. I'm just picking a pair, all right? So there are three different events. I have both numeric, both pictures, or one numeric and one picture. And I need the probability of picking each one of these. Well, first of all, let me just point out that there are no other cases. So these three are mutually exclusive events. And together, they basically span the whole uh, set of different choices. If I have two cards, I can have only these three choices, either two numerics or two pictures or one of them numeric and one picture. There are no other choices in this particular case. So, now let's talk about the probabilities. Now, again, the elementary events which comprise our sample space are all the different pairs which I can take from the 52 cards, which is number of combinations from 52 by 2. Now, let's think about the first case. So, um, two numerics, the probability of two numerics is equal. Now, obviously, in the denominator, I have to have this. Now, what do I have to have in the numerator? number of different pairs where both of them are numeric. There are only 36 numerics, so how many different pairs can I get? Well, obviously, this number of um, um, combinations of two cards out of 36. Now, similarly, the probability to have two pictures would be equal to number of combinations of 2 out of 16 pictures divided by the same denominator. 
because this is 1 over this is the probability of each pair. And finally, if I have numeric and uh, picture in any order, I'm not really uh, suggesting that this is first and this is second, doesn't really matter. So I can have, so I have a group of 36 numeric and I'm picking only one of them, which is number of um, combinations from 36 by 1 times number of combinations from 16 by 1 divided by the same denominator. Well, obviously this is 36 and this is 16. So anyway, um, this is basically the answer to the problem. But as a prudent man, I would like to check my answer. In this particular case, how can I check the answer? Well, I should really add up these three probabilities and check if it's equal to 1, the result of this, right? So, um, in other words, I will just add all the numerators together and see if they, because they share the same denominator, so I will add numerators and I will check if I will have the same denominator. So, I need to calculate C522, which is 52 times 51 divided by 1 times 2. Okay, this is equal to, I have already calculated it somewhere, 1326. Now, this one, 36 by 2, is 36 times 35 divided by 1, 2, which is 630. 16, 2, which is 16 times 15 divided by 1, 2, is equal to 120. And finally, this one, which is times C16 by 1, which is actually uh, 36 times 16, is equal to 576. Now you add these three numbers, 6006725221 goes, 613, yes. So balance is out, so to speak, right? So it actually gives me assurance that my calculations are correct. Now the third one. All right, the third one is a very simple one. Um, there is a deadly game of Russian roulette. Um, the one takes the revolver. Let's say we have seven uh, capacity of seven bullets in the revolver. Puts only one bullet, spins the cylinder, and shoots. My question is, what's the probability of shooting twice in a row and not firing both times? So, both times we are not getting the bullet in the proper place to make a, a shot. Okay. So, let's just think about it. If I have only one bullet out of seven, and hopefully the revolver is very symmetrical, so it's basically a random, when I'm spinning the revolver, the, the probability of getting the bullet in the um, in, in that specific place for, for the firing is equal to one seventh, right? So that's the probability of fire one bullet. Now, if I don't, the probability of not firing is obviously six sevenths, because there are six different empty spaces, em empty spots. So, I'm doing it once and then I'm doing it another time. Now, these both times are independent which means that the probability of happening both is actually equal to the product of their probabilities which means that I have to multiply 6 over 7 by 6 over 7 and this is my probability of not firing two times in a row well significantly greater than half so it's good chances for 3 by the way it would be well for 3 it would be what uh, 36 times 216, and this would be 350 minus 7, 343, something like this. Well, it's still better than half. So even three times in a row, you have better 
than 50% chances of not really firing the revolver. Okay, now my last problem is, all right, um, there is a legend about King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. So let's consider we have, by the way, there are many Knights of the Round Table. I uh, checked the Wikipedia and there are names, 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 there are many different names. But I do know two main kind of people in this, in this set. Uh, one is the King Arthur, and another is Sir Lancelot. He is a very famous knight. So, let's consider that all the knights uh, of the round table, and there are, let's say, N knights, N knights of the round table, they're coming and they're taking randomly their, the, the places around, around the table. So let's assume that the, the chairs are not assigned. So whenever they come, everybody sits randomly, basically. So the probability of any permutation is exactly the same. So my question is, what's the probability of these two, King Arthur and Sir Lancelot, to sit next to each other? I suggest two different solutions. Solution number one, let one of them take any place, doesn't really matter which one. Then let's consider how many choices for the second guy uh, exist. Well, if let's say King Arthur took one place, there are n minus one other choices. Now, only two of these n minus one choices, if this is King Arthur, then only two choices are next. So here is one choice, here is another choice where Sir, Sir Lancelot can, can take the spot to be next to King. So all others are basically not satisfactory. So we have two out of n minus one choices good in some way, right? So the probability should be two over n minus one. So out of n minus one spots, only two spots are considered to be good. Well, if you have some doubts about this approach, because I basically say, okay, let King Arthur choose any place. Um, let's think about this more, I don't know, more theoretically, if you wish. So, I was saying that any permutation of knights around the table is um, equally probable, and there are n factorial permutations, which means every one of them has the same probability, 1 over n factorial. Now let's see how many different combinations are considered to be good combinations. Well, King Arthur and Lancelot can sit there are and different spots for King, and for each one of them, two spots for Sir Lancelot on, on both sides of the King. And that's different permutations of this, right? We are considering all the different permutations. So it's two times n positions for these two. So any of n positions of the King and for each one of them, two positions of the Sir Lancelot are around this, right? Now, all other n minus 2 knights can sit whatever way they want, so the permutations are n minus 2 factorial. So that's the answer, basically. But if you think about it, um, uh, what is n factorial? n factorial is n the previous one n minus 1, previous one is n minus 2, etc., etc., up to 1, right? So n minus 2 up to 1 is cancelling this one, n cancelling this one, and we still have 2 divided by n minus 1, the same answer. All right, that concludes this particular lecture. I do suggest you to go to unisor.com to this particular lecture, and again, go through the notes, try to solve all the problems yourself, if you didn't do it before. Um, and um, I think it's just, you know, very beneficial for, for you to, 
to go through these prob problems and any other problems yourself because again that's the purpose of this course you would feel much more comfortable if you will solve all these problems yourself that that's the purpose actually okay that's it for today thanks very much and good luck <laughs>